हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर विजय प्रकाश एंड टुडे माय टॉपिक इज पॉसलिन लैमिनेट विनियर नाउ व्हाट इज अ लैमिनेट विनियर बाय डेफिनेशन इट इज अ सुपरफिशियल और आर्टिफिशियल डिस्प्ले इन मल्टीपल लेयर्स और आल्सो इट कैन बी डिफाइंड एज अ थिन शीट ऑफ मटेरियल व्हिच इज यूजुअली यूज्ड टू फिनिश और लैमिनेट विनियर इज अ वेरी कंजर्वेटिव प्रोसीजर टू एस्थेटिकली रिस्टोर the appearance of a discolored tooth or uh, a deformed tooth uh, that should be only a very mild mildly deformed teeth or there can be a mild spacing between the teeth so there you can cosmetically correct by using a laminate veneer and it it is consisting of a thin ceramic laminate uh, which is which is bonded onto the uh, prepared labial surface of the affected tooth and uh, the tooth preparation in a uh, laminate veneers is only confined to the enamel so how were porcelain veneers uh, first introduced porcelain veneers were first introduced by charles pinkus uh, between 1930 and 1940s on hollywood stars which were having uh, badly discolored teeth so in those uh, this gentleman uh, bonded uh, these uh, kind of shells on to the badly colored teeth with the help of a denture adhesive because that time there was no uh, as such adhesive or a bonding agent to bond it so definitely they used to just fall off uh, very fast and that was uh, one problem with them so actually the laminate veneers evolved with the time uh, when bis gma that is bis glycidyl dimethyl acrylate uh, resin uh, that was the composite resin Uh, were introduced and bonding agents were introduced and um, uh, Binocore introduced acid etch technique in 1950s. With these discoveries, there was renewed interest in uh, laminate veneers. And initially, how they were uh, used, they uh, the clinicians used only composite resins, which were directly added onto the facial surface after etching the surface. And this method was called as bonding. then after more evolution uh, preformed veneers were bonded onto the etched tooth surface and uh, this process was called as laminating and these preformed veneers were from uh, the the denture teeth uh, or or uh, shells of acrylic which was customized uh, while taking impressions from the patient's mouth so these were placed and uh, bonded onto the etched tooth surface then the evolution uh, came up uh, with glaze ceramic because uh, with the introduction of ceramic when you have these bonding agents and resins you have uh, with uh, porcelain veneers you have improved color stability abrasion resistance and they were well tolerated by the gingiva and that is from where the porcelain laminate veneers uh, were preferred method of uh, bonding uh, or uh, correcting the discolored teeth another method which was tried on to ceramic veneers were etching the ceramic veneer uh, with hydrofluoric acid that is the internal surface that was done to improve the bond strength between the luting agent and the veneer so also uh, by incorporating silane coupling agents uh, that showed an improvement in the shear bond strength of the ceramic veneer and um, it this these uh, materials were then extensively used in bonding uh, porcelain veneers so what are indications for porcelain laminate veneers they are indicated in discolored teeth or tooth or teeth with intrinsic staining such as tetracycline stains or in cases of enamel hypoplasia or where you have mild diastema that is spacing between the teeth you can uh, close them by using laminate veneers or by uh, or for correcting mild form of uh, malformed anterior teeth so some mild form of malocclusion also you can correct by using a porcelain laminate veneers and what are the contraindications contraindications are in patients with poor oral hygiene where the patient is having a high caries index or the patient has uh, parafunctional habits or extensive uh, extensively restored teeth so in those cases you should not use uh, laminate veneer treatment now preparation of crown 
for accepting laminate veneers. Now, as as I told in the beginning, that you require a minimal preparation, and uh, that preparation is confined only onto the enamel. And why enamel? Because uh, the there is a good seal uh, between the tooth and the veneer. First and secondly, it effectively reduces micro leakage. So these are two advantage of keeping your preparation only into the enamel. Also, the finish line uh, which is given here is slight chamfer, which is placed at the gingival crest or slightly subgingivally. That is for the aesthetic reasons. And the minimal thickness for ceramic veneer is about 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters. 0.3 in the cervical region because there the enamel is thin and that is the reason your thickness of veneer is also less. Now what is the armentarian which you require, the burrs which you require for preparing uh, the, uh, doing the preparation. You don't require an extensive armentarian for preparing laminate veneers. You require depth cutters, these are depth cutters and then you require a round ended tapered fissure burr and you have these finishing burrs you may require football diamond if you are doing extending the preparation onto the lingual surface and uh, then you require the finishing burrs now let's see what are these steps of uh, tooth preparation in laminate veneers first is the label reduction so when you start with your label reduction you use a depth cutter and you make cuts of around 0 0.5, 0 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter depth. You can use a depth cutter of 1.6 millimeter diameter where the shaft is of uh, 1 millimeters, but these, ex these extensions are 0.3 millimeters on either sides. So you can just uh, place the depth cutter onto the tooth surface and uh, just go right till the end of the uh, depth till the shank touches the tooth structure. With this you know that you have gone till the depth of 0.3 millimeters at least. You have other kind of um, depth cutters also wherein you have 0.5 millimeters of depth. That depends what uh, how deep you want to do the preparation it depends on selecting that type of depth cutters. Then you will use a round and tapered diamond. Now round and tapered diamond is used uh, in two planes uh, and you will join your uh, depth cuts which you have made with the help of depth cutters and uh, you will divide your tooth according to the shape of the tooth that is you will have incisal two third and cervical one third. Incisal two third you will go along the uh, for incisal two third, you are going to go along the surface of the tooth like this and for cervical one third, you will just tilt the burr slightly and go along the long axis of the tooth so that you maintain the contour, the natural contour of the tooth. Next we come to the proximal reduction. Now proximal reduction is an extension of the label reduction uh, which is done proximally and the same you are using a round and tapered diamond as I had shown you. And the preparation is extended to the gingival crest into the contact area. But care has to be taken that the contact area is left intact. You can see here also in the, in the tooth that the contact area is left intact. You go till the contact area but don't break the contact area. So your preparation should just stop uh, short of breaking the contact. Next step is the incisal reduction. Now there are two techniques of placing the incisal finish line. Now in the first technique there is no incisal reduction. You are not reducing the incisal reduction and the preparation of the label surface ends on the incisal edge itself. Like you can see in this uh, figure which you see here and you use a, a round ended tapered diamond as you were using for your uh, label reduction. This technique is also called as the window technique wherein you are not involving, uh, you are not reducing the incisal reduction, you are not doing any incisal reduction. So this technique is also called as the window technique. Now in the second technique which is called as the wrap around technique, the incisal surface is reduced and the ceramic overlaps the incisal surface and ends on the lingual aspect. Like in this case if you see the there is 
you have done the incisal reduction and you are covering and going on to the lingual aspect so basically you are wrapping around uh, the ceramic all around and you are covering the incisal edge now design of the incisal edge that is whether we have to uh, do the incisal reduction or we don't have to do the incisal reduction will depend on uh, the facial lingual thickness of the tooth one that is very important factor another can be the aesthetic reasons and thirdly the occlusal consideration so these are all the three factors on which it will determine whether you will be doing incisal reduction or you will be giving a wrap around technique where, where, or you will be using a wrap around technique the advantage of using a wrap around technique is it provides slight incisal overlap uh, which provides a vertical stop that aids in proper seating of the uh, veneer so this is one advantage also if you see that ceramic is stronger in compression than in tension and that is the reason why uh, the second technique which is the wrap around technique is more preferred one next step is the lingual reduction now if you see the lingual finish line is created with a round and tapered diamond and the finish line should be at least 1 mm away from the center contact so whenever you are evaluating uh, the bite of the patient the occlusal relationship of the patient you have to see where the centric bite of the patient is and um, your finish line that is the lingual reduction should be at least 1 mm away from the centric contact also the finish line ex should extend in the lingual aspect um, with with extending of the finish line into the lingual aspect it increases the uh, surface area and helps in a better bonding because you get a greater surface area for bonding and that is the reason you have a better uh, strength of the veneer next step is finishing of the preparation so the prepared tooth surface is smoothened and all sharp line angles are rounded so you should make sure that there are no sharp line angles because if you have uh, sharp line angles that will be area of stress concentration and chances of fracturing of the veneer will be there so this is how your uh, final laminate veneer preparation should look like next uh, once you have done the preparation you will be making an impression with the help of uh, polyvinyl siloxane uh, and uh, after making the impression you may uh, if the patient insists uh, on provisional restoration then you can give but otherwise provisional restorations are not needed and how to give a provisional restorations you will just uh, make thin shells of comp uh, composite resin and you just apply uh, etchant at one or just drop one or two drops of etchant and you can bond that you have to be very very careful because uh, you have to make sure that when you are removing the provisional restoration that time your prepared tooth should not get damaged because otherwise then your laminate veneer is not going to fit onto that once you have the completed uh, porcelain veneer which is ready from the lab then you have to bond it uh, and uh, for bonding the veneer you use a dual cure resin cement uh, and uh, uh, to bond the porcelain veneer onto the prepared tooth surface the use of resin cement uh, is advantageous because uh, it forms a impervious film it does not allow any fluids uh, to leak between the prepared uh, tooth and the restoration that is the veneer so that is the preferred method of bonding the porcelain veneer with the prepared tooth so this is all about uh, porcelain laminate veneers thank you for watching the video